Okay. Welcome, guys. Let's get started. Okay, so we're going to go through meiosis today. Um, and it's very important for you guys to know mitosis uh, to, to help you memorize meiosis because if we take a look at it, meiosis is actually just mitosis happening twice as I said yesterday. So I always memorize it. Let me just get a new page, uh, make a new page very quickly, new page after, and then, okay. So I always remember the process of mitosis by using the IP on the mat, IP mat. Interface, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase. And then we say with my hostess, that you're going to pee on the mat twice. So you've got interface, prophase one, metaphase one, anaphase one, telephase one, prophase two, metaphase two, anaphase two, and telephase two. And that's how I memorize the different phases in sequence. So let's take a look at what happens in each phase. And I've placed this, this is in your notes, it's on lesson eight. Okay, so prophase one. We've got, now remember interface is actually not part of mitosis or meiosis. It happens before the time. And we have DNA replication happening before the time. So we already have replicated chromosomes when we start with prophase one. And with prophase one, what happens is your centrosome breaks into two centrioles and moves to opposite ends of the cells. The spindle fibers that are attached to them start to form. And they attach themselves to the chromosomes around the area of the centromere. Now, let me just use another color so it is more visible. So they attach to the centromeres. We go over into metaphase one. Now, there's going to be a very important factor that, happen that happens during prophase one that is going to help to make up uh, genetic variation and we're going to talk about that later it's called crossing over crossing over let me go through crossing over very quickly just to explain it so in prophase remember that you always have one chromosome coming from mommy and you have a chromosome coming from daddy and then what happens during the um, crossing over in prophase one is that they actually lie over one another. So they move closer to one another. Uh, so if you would imagine that green one for a moment, I'm going to just draw it a bit closer. It will actually reach over here and do this. And so it crosses over, but not just in one place, in many places. And then it's going to leave part of itself in this section over here. And it's going to take part of the um, part of the mommy side into it. So you're going to end up with two chromosomes looking like this. And then we know crossing over has happened. And so your other chromosome is going to look like that. And it's going to have a gray part. So it's, it swaps out the genetic material. Uh, so where it swaps out, that is a specific gene that it's swapping out. So it could be swapping out um, things like eye color, eye color. Okay. And when it swaps out the eye color, it's the same gene, but it's different alleles of that gene. So it could be brown or blue eye color that it's swapping out. Um, during crossing over, for example. But that's just one factor among many other factors that's swapping up. Okay, let's go on to metaphase one. In metaphase one, we've got some, uh, it's the spindle fibers is going to line up on the equator, just like in mitosis. It lines up on the equator, so all of the chromosomes are lined up on the equator. 
And so that's meter phase one. And the, it, it, it does it in pairs. We call it homologous pairs. Homo meaning the same. Logos, logic, uh, the logic of the DNA. Homologous pairs that's lining up on the equator. And then there's another factor happening during meter phase one that is causing variation. It's called random arrangement. And in random arrangement, what is happening is that any two of these, if we take a look at that chromosome over there, it could lie on this side or it could lie on this side. So these two can swap around. So because these are going to become different cells. And when it pulls apart, we start calling it in anaphase one, it pulls these chromosomal pairs apart. And we get variation happening. Now random arrangement becomes random assortment. Random assortment. So it sorts randomly. Okay, random assortment. Okay. And so some of the chromosomes are going to be pulled. Now remember there's now now two factors of variation happened here. There's crossing over and random arrangement be becomes random assortment. Ruan, I think I know the question you're going to ask, but ask it and then, then we'll talk about it. Uh, Ruan, I can't hear you yet. Let me just see if there's something wrong with my... Just check your speaker still on mute. Your microphone still on mute. You have a question, Ruan? Okay, uh, put it in the chat. I can't hear at the moment, but I see your microphone on my side is still on, on mute. So I'm not sure what's happening. Let's continue. Okay, so that's chrome phase one. We get chromosomes forming. Spindle fibers forming. The centrioles go to opposite poles. Spindle fibers attach to the centro, uh, centromeres. They pull them in alignment during meter phase and then they pull apart during anaphase one. And then during telophase one, it becomes two cells, one, two cells. And now we're gonna go through and directly go into, um, pro um, into meter phase two. Then we get pro phase two. And again, we get simple fibers, centrioles, now move to opposite poles and they, Attach again to the chromosomes by the centromeres, but now it's single chromosomes, not a pair anymore, not a homologous pair anymore. And then they split up and move to opposite ends. So over here, I was still two in, I was still diploid. Over here, after the split, I become one in because those are replicated chromosomes, but there's only a single set. But now we split the single set in half. Okay, and then the chromatids becomes daughter chromosomes, and we get four cells forming during telophase two. Now, it's important for you to make a drawing of this over the weekend and watch the videos that are posted on Google Classroom. That's going to be very important. This is a lot to take in. My hostess is a lot to take in in terms of content and to first absorb but after that it becomes easier so i want to stop the lesson here for today and just ask you you need to draw this mind map it's lesson eight on google classroom and you need to draw each phase um, in sequence and you should be able to tell what happens in each phase and i need you to go watch the other videos on my hostess um, and then what we'll do on Monday is I'll go through diseases relating to when my hostess goes wrong. And we'll start with the first worksheet on my hostess. And then I'm going to ask you guys to do the um, electronic version of the my hostess test, the multiple choice on my hostess. Guys, good luck. Can I ask um, at this stage if there's any questions?
Uh, you're also welcome to put the questions into the chat. I'm, I'm holding on for a moment just to find out if there's any questions. Sir? Yes, I'm listening. I think we already drew the, the stages, the different stages back in class. I think it was before Corona happened. Yes. Okay. Listen, all. grade 12s. Okay, for the grade 12s on the list. <laughs> This lesson, I invited you guys to come back and just as revision. This lesson oh, is actually okay. not for you. This is for the grade 11s from HP school having lessons in the afternoon. We actually already started with the grade 12 curriculum with them. And so oh. I'm actually instructing them and I'm putting the recording up for them, but I'm also going, I'm putting also the recording up for you. So for you guys, this is just revision. You don't have to stress, um, but this is just so you have a recap lesson since we are, um, since I'm doing grade 12 topics anyway already with, with them, okay? Uh, okay, thank you, sir. Okay. okay. Okay, are we going to do RNA world hypothesis? No, we're not. No, no, Natal, we, we won't be doing that. Okay, any more questions, guys? I'm just give, I'm going to give a minute for any questions to come through on the chat or to a uh, hand to be raised or anyone. How deep do we need to know the DNA replication? DNA replication, um, just what is in my notes, nothing more. And please do not go and memorize any of the enzymes that they use during DNA replications. You do not need to know the enzymes that are controlling DNA replication. That's very important. It's not ask, it's unneeded for you to memorize it, please. Okay, thanks guys. Good luck. Go and um, how do you, uh, will we? Okay, just I'm looking, I'm waiting for your full question, but Toby, there's just like half a sentence there. Um, histones, you do need to know about histones and be careful you spelt it incorrectly there. It's with an N-E-S at the end. Uh, but yes, you do need to know about histones. Those are proteins. Those are not enzymes. Uh, those are proteins and the DNA. All that you basically have to need to know is it's part of the DNA and the DNA winds itself out around the histones to be able to become a chromosome. Okay, so Yes, you do need to know about his terms, but no detail about it. Is there an exception uh, to the double helix? No, it's always a double helix. And that's because A needs to bond to T and C to G. So there needs to be a same amount of adenine and thymine and guanine and cytosine. Now, the moment you have, because I thought initially there's a triple helix, but it, uh, because um, adenine and thymine has to be the same amount. And then um, if we take a look at guanine and cytosine being the same amount, we know it needs to be double helix. We know there needs to be two sides because otherwise there wouldn't be the same amount of adenine and thymine and same amount of guanine and cytosine within a DNA molecule. And there's always a very nice question in the, um, in the short questions, in the multiple choice questions that asks you how, if there's so many guanines, uh, so uh, if there's like, like, for example, let me just go to the blank page here, make another blank page, okay. Uh, view journal new page after. Okay, so that they tell you that there's like 
uh, 20% guanines, and they ask you how many thymines are there in the short questions. And then, um, then, they, then you work it out and you say, okay, if there's 20% guanine, then there's 20% um, cytosine. And so what is left behind, that's 40%. What's left behind is 60%. So 60% is divided between thymine and adenine, and then um, that's 30% for adenine and 30% for thymine. Now, also very important is that um, I ask you, what about RNA? Remember, we never said RNA is a double helix. We always said RNA is a single strand. RNA, mRNA, rRNA, tRNA is always a single strand. It's never a double helix. We never said RNA is a double helix whatsoever. Okay, any more questions, guys? Okay, let's talk with just you and me. Okay, you're more than welcome to ask more questions. Uh, just message me on the um, WhatsApp and then I'll answer as soon as I see it. Um, the function of RNA, 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 you don't need to know. It's basically a structural component of, it's a structural component of uh, the ribosome. But there's no specific function that you need to know about. You're welcome to Google it more, but you don't need to know it for your exam purposes. Okay. It's a pleasure, Latabu. Okay, I will see you guys on Monday. Thank you.